Okay, so here's where we left off last time. We have our game, um, and I added sound effects to it. I had some background music too, but I've muted that for now, just because it was super loud on the last video, and I didn't realize how loud it was going to be until after I had already uploaded the video, so sorry about that. Um, so we have our hint system here, which is a little wonky. We're going to revisit that hint system relatively soon here. Um, but other than that, we have this uh, score meter, and that corresponds to our score goals. Uh, our goal, our last goal is 5,000, which means that this is filling up towards 5,000. We'll deal with having uh, little markers here where each of the score goals are in just a bit. Um, but today, we're going to look at how we can transition in and out of the scene. Um, so that once our player reaches the high score, we definitely know that the scene's over, but... Um, we can have whatever goal we want to. We can have it not be a score goal, but rather uh, a peace goal or a jelly goal or something like that, and they have to meet that within a certain number of moves. Um, but today we're just going to build the framework where we're fading into the scene and then also fading out of the scene. So that's what we're going to deal with first here. Uh, we're going to be using Unity's built-in Mechanum system of animations. Uh, so if you're not super familiar with that, then um, I might go a little fast, but I'll try to make sure that I'm covering everything in a way that everybody can understand. So with that said, uh, let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is I want to uh, take a look at my top UI canvas here. So I'm going to flip over into my scene view, and I'm going to have this uh, create a panel that's going to go on top of everything else. So in my top UI here, I'm going to add to it a child UI, and I'm going to make this a panel. Panels, by default, have this one specific UI image to them. Uh, I'm going to make my source image over here in the panels image portion. I'm going to make it none, which will make it just flat. Also, right now, by default, panels have this kind of um, uh, this kind of transparent look to them. I'm going to make mine full white, and I'm going to make my alpha value full as well. So it's going to appear. 100% white. It's going to block everything on the screen. I'm also going to make sure that this is a raycast target. And by making this a raycast target, I'm making sure that any buttons behind this aren't going to be active uh, once this is on the screen, meaning that the player won't be able to manipulate the candies or any other buttons we might have on the screen. I'm going to call this panel um, fade panel. Now, um, I'm going to add a new component to this. The component I'm going to add is an animator. Not animation, but animator, OR. Uh, animation is the old way of making animations in Unity. Uh, if we want to use the Mechanum system, though, we're going to use animator. Now, the animator uh, requires a uh, controller, and then if you're doing like 3D um, animations, it needs an avatar. For now, I'm going to create this controller. So in my assets folder, I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call this folder animation. And then inside the animation folder, I'm going to create another new folder for my controllers so that those are separate. Now inside here, I'm going to create an animation con or animator controller. And I'm going to call this uh, fade panel controller. Uh, now I'm going to find my fade panel. I'm going to link up my, oops, there we go, to my controller. I'm going to link that up. Now there's two new windows we're going to need to open here. The first one is the animator window, and I'm going to leave that kind of up here. I'm going to come back to that in a second. And the second one is the animation window. So I'm going to dock these. Um, I'm actually going to dock this one down here. The reason I'm docking it down there is so that I can see uh, my scene at the same time I'm creating my animations. So um, to begin animating fade panel, create an animation clip. So I'm going to hit create to create a new clip. And it's going to ask me where I want to save this. And I want to save it in my animation folder but I want to make a new folder in there as well. And this is going to be for my animations themselves. I have a tendency to be a little organized with my folders, so 
Just bear with me here. Um, I'm going to decide to save this as, uh, we'll call this panel fade in. All right, now here are the properties. I'm going to have it fade in over a period of time of one second. Um, and what that means is it's going to go from fully opaque to fully transparent within one second. So uh, I'm going to first start by creating a beginning um, a keyframe. And so if you'll notice here, I got this white line and I can control that. I can scrub through it by clicking and dragging in this area up here. So I'm going to go all the way over to zero. I'm going to turn on record so that I'm recording what's happening and make sure I have my fade panel. Uh, oops, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Um, and in my image script, I'm just going to alter this and then alter it back. And the reason I'm doing that is to make sure that this knows that image color is something it should be keeping track of. So I just change the color and then I change it back to what I wanted it to be. Now I'm going to scrub all the way over to one second here. I'm going to change my color to be white, but fully opaque. And also I'm going to turn off Raycast Target. So if I play this animation now, it does this nice smooth fade out. So what I want to happen is I want it to start fully opaque and then fade into the scene. Okay. Now, what I'm going to use the animator for, if I click over here, you can see that panel fade in is the default animation now. Now if I hit play, I just want to show you what's going to happen. So, all right. So it's fading in again and again and again and again. If I look over here at Animator, I can see how it's progressing through this. Now, there's a couple reasons it's doing that. One, it doesn't have an actual state to go to, so it's just repeating the state again and again and again and again. Um, so one solution would be to create an idle state for this to transition to once it's finished its own animation. The other solution would be to make it so that it's an animation that doesn't loop. So let's take a look at those two solutions and how they can both kind of solve our problem here. So in my animation folder here, in my actual animations, I'm going to click on panel fade in, and you'll see that I have some options here to this animation. If I uncheck loop time, it's not going to loop anymore. So if I hit play, um, I can see it fade in, and then because I turn that raycast target off, I can still manipulate things. Now, I want to have kind of another panel here just to tell the user what to expect on this level, so I don't want it to fade in automatically. So I am still going to use that non-looping, but I'm also going to make another animation for my panel here, and that animation is going to be um, for when it's just idle. And so in order to create that new animation, um, I'm going to make sure that my fade panel is selected, Right now you can see that the animation it's playing is panel fade in. If I click here, I can create a new clip. And I'm going to call this uh, panel idle. And so this is going to be the idle state of the panel. Now, uh, my idle state, I want to be just 100% transparent. So I'm going to click on record. Go over here and choose my color. And bring that all the way down. And that's really all I'm going to do. If I hit play, you can see it, there's nothing to play because it's just this one thing. Oh, yeah, I also want to make sure that, go back to record, I want to make sure that Raycast target is off. So there's my idle. And now I want to make another idle, which is before it fades. So my new clip I'm going to call panel pre-fade. Okay, and I want this to be an idle state where the panel is 100% opaque and white. And so to do that, I'm just going to choose my color, change it. Oh, sorry, I need to make sure I'm in record first. Choose my color, change it, and then change it back so it knows to keep track of this, and then keep Raycast Target on. 
and there we go. So now if I have my fade panel selected and go to my animator, I now have three different states. So what I want to do is I want to go from entry to uh, panel prefade, from panel prefade to fade in, and then from fade in to idle. So what I'm gonna do here really quickly is I'm just gonna organize these. And you can navigate on this by holding down your middle mouse button. Um, all right, so I'm gonna make my prefade. I'm gonna right click on that. I'm gonna set it as default state. And then I'm gonna right click and choose to make a transition to fade in. And then I'm gonna pull this over here. And then I'm gonna make another transition to panel idle. All right, so now that I have these set up, since I don't have any requirements on these transitions, it's gonna automatically go from here over to there. So I can show you that if I go to my game screen and hit play. We can, and now it's just repeating the idle again, again and again and again and again. And in the idle phase, I made it so that it was an array cast target, so I can manipulate stuff. Now, let's go through that with actually looking at the game to see what this effect looks like. And it's going to look like essentially the exact same thing. So we've got, and it fades to the game. All right, cool. Now, like I said, we want to have another panel kind of on top of it that tells our user um, what to expect on this level. And I haven't made any graphics for that yet, but um, I will at some point in time. So for now, I'm just going to go to my fade panel. I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose UI. And I'm going to make a another panel inside of here. And I'm going to resize this so that it's kind of in the middle of the screen here. I'm going to grab these so these triangular things are the anchors, if you aren't familiar with them. And the anchors tell you, um, relative to the size of the screen, where you want this piece to be. Um, right now the anchors are full screen, which means that it's always going to be roughly this percentage, no matter the size of the screen. Um, the easiest way for me to demonstrate this is if I change this from what it was to free aspect, and then take a look here. Oh yeah, it couldn't follow that. In fact, I maybe just broke it. Let's see if I did break it. 16 by 10, okay, cool, I didn't break it. Let's change it to 16 by 10 landscape. So it's trying very hard to keep the distance, the percentage distance from the sides the same, but because the dimensions of the screen are so different here versus um, 16 by 10 portrait, if it makes um, this amount on top and bottom, it makes it so that it's really, really skinny. Um, what you can do is you can play around with uh, the anchors on that. So if I were to make the anchors fit just this box exactly, then that box is going to stay exactly where it should be uh, all the time. Now, that can be good, but it can also make things end up looking a little distorted. So if I go back over here and change from portrait to landscape, that's more what you'd expect it to be. However, if you were to have a graphic in here, say a picture of a dude, um, or dudette, I mean, doesn't matter, and you switch this back to landscape, it's going to stretch in that direction because this box itself has stretched. It's gotten wider versus tall. So you want to be really careful about that. Um, I'm just going to go back to portrait, and I'm going to leave these anchors at the edges of the box. I'm also going to go over here and I'm going to make this panel fully opaque. Um, and let's see, what else do I want to do? I want to give this a little drop shadow. So on my panel here, I'm going to choose to add a component and I'm going to choose to add a shadow. And by default, the shadow doesn't have very much of an offset. Um, I'm going to increase the effect distance, which increases how far to the right and down it is. So I'm going to say it's 20 pixels to the right and 20 pixels down. And if I look over here, it's kind of a nice effect. Um, I'm going to make it maybe a little more transparent. 
just to make the effect a little more subtle. And yeah, that's pretty good. Now I'm going to, on this panel here, I'm going to add some children to it. First, I'm going to make a button for the user to press to move on to the next scene. So this button I'm going to make a little bit bigger, kind of put it down there. And again, same thing with the anchors. Um, I can have the anchors fit exactly the box. This time though, I'm just going to have them be relative to the bottom center of the screen. So I'm going to click my anchor presets and I've got bottom and I've got the two corners or the bottom center and I'm going to choose bottom center. And that moves all four anchors down here. Um, I'm going to rename this OK button. And in my OK button, I'm going to find the text object. And I'm just going to make this say OK. Um, and I'm going to choose best fit so that it's nice and big. All right. Again, I'll, I'll make some custom graphics for this. So there's our button. I'm going to make some text here. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a UI image as a text background. And I'm going to make this fit most of its container there. And I'm going to have this anchored to the top center. I'm going to change this from being uh, called image to background. And I'm also going to change the color a little bit. Um, I'm going to make this kind of a darker gray, but I'm going to go into the blues, I think. Yeah, I kind of like the way that looks. Switch over to game view. Yeah, that's not too bad. All right, now on this background, I'm going to create some children of that. So UI. Um, for now, it's just going to be text. And I'm going to pull this up. Eventually, we'll have images of what like the goals are. So I'm going to center this text and choose best fit. And I'm going to say goals. And then later, we'll add our goals. And I'm also going to anchor this to the top middle. All right. So if we switch over to game view, all right, cool. And if I just hit play, my background is still going to fade, which isn't quite what I want. Uh, what I want to happen, see how it fades. Um, now this blocks my interfering with stuff, and this button doesn't do anything. I can still interfere with stuff that's behind there, but I want to happen um, that the user starts with this screen. They click OK, and then maybe this exits and then it fades out. So I'm going to choose this panel here. I'm going to go into my scene view, make sure I've got the right panel. I do. Um, and I'm going to add to this another animator. So I'm going to add component, animator, and this needs an animation controller. So I'm going to create a animation controller or animator controller. And I'm going to call this um, game info controller. How about that? And then I'll jump back to my panel here. I'll hook that up. And now to begin anim animating it, I just have to create a clip. So I'm going to click create. And this is going to be in my animations. And this is going to be game info slide in. I feel like I'm covering this really fast. So if you're unfamiliar with the Mechanum system, uh, it might not be a bad idea to just kind of watch a quick tutorial on that. Um, okay, so I want to record this, and I want to make sure I'm at the zero position. Um, I'm going to, actually, before I do that, I'm going to go to the, let's say, 30 or half a second position. I'm going to change just something with the position really quickly here. So like... I don't know. I'm going to change this from uh, negative 1 back to what it was, negative 0.8, so that it registers this position. Okay, and now I'm going to go here to the, I'm going to scrub back to 0. I'm going to make sure that I'm using these anchors, so make sure that they're blue. And then with those anchors selected, I'm going to move this all the way up and out of scene. And then that way, 
Oh, haha, I only moved it left and right. So let me undo what I did. Um, I want to change just 0.35. Cool. So I want to change both the left and right and the up and down. So here, move it all the way up. And then that way my animation is it sliding in, just like that. Now I'm going to go out of record, um, move this back to where it was. I'm going to create a new clip and I'm going to call this game info idle. And again, I want this to just be it staying right there. So I'm going to change just something negative 0.8 to trigger this to actually start recording and I'm just going to leave it to be one frame. And now I'm going to make one more animation. I'm going to go out of record, create new clip. And I'm going to call this game info out. And so what I want to happen here is I want it to slide out through the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to make sure I'm in record. I'm going to go to start here and I'm going to change both I'm going to change my top to just 0.35 and then I'm going to go to 0 0.30 and pull this out of the scene just like that. So there we go. It should... Okay, now I need to arrange these. So with my panel selected, I'm going to go to the animator and I've got my slide in. I'm going to have it go to idle. So I'm going to make a transition to idle, and then I'm going to make that go to slide out. So I'm going to make a transition to out. And now if I hit play, we'll see it slide in and then immediately go back out because that second, that idle phase doesn't have any time to it. So if I hit play here, we should see. And then that last animation um, is looping. So we want to make sure that last animation doesn't loop. So if we go to our animations, uh, game info out, I'm going to turn off loop time. So now we should see it slide in and then almost immediately slide back out. Cool. All right. So now we want all of this to be triggered when we press this button. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a new object and everything else is kind of attached to the board. So I might as well attach this to the board as well. I'm going to create an empty game object. I'm going to call this game object um, animation controller. And anything I want to animate, I'm going to have here. Um, or at least have a uh, reference to on a script here. Uh, OK, so let's see here. What do I want to do next? Oh, yeah, OK. So I want to go to my animator. And I want to go from slide in to idle, but I want to create a condition upon which it goes from idle to out. And to do that, I'm going to highlight the transition from idle to out. I'm going to go over to my conditions here, where my list is currently empty. I'm going to add a new condition. And right now there are no parameters. So over here in my animator, next to where it says layers, I'm going to create a parameter by clicking this little plus symbol here. And my parameter is going to be a bool. And this bool is, I'm just going to call it out. So over here, my condition is going to be out. And when out is true, we're going to go out. And then this doesn't loop, so we're good. Next thing I want to do is I want to go to the UI for the entire panel, or the animator controller for the entire panel. And I want it to Prefade. Oh, okay. I wanted to go from prefade to fade in. To I oh okay, from prefade. I don't want it to go to fade in until the condition is met. So again, I'm going to add a parameter. It's a bool. I'm going to call this bool out. And I'm going to add this condition. So if out is true, it's going to go from here to here. What that means is we shouldn't see any of those transitions that we were before if we hit play now. So there we go. It's not moving out and the panel isn't fading. 
What we want to happen now is when I click OK, I want to trigger both of those transitions to now be uh, in the out phase so that this will slide down and the background will fade out. So to do that, I'm going to make a script here. And I'm going to be really specific with this. I'm going to create a C sharp script. I'm going to call this um, fade panel controller. And I'm going to open this up in um, Visual Studio. Now, in here, what I want to do first is I want to make a reference to my two different animators, the animator for the panel and the animator for the um, game info. So I'm going to do public animator, and I'm going to call this panel anim for the panel, and a public animator, I'm going to call this um, game info anim. So I've got my two animators here. I don't need anything with the start and update method, so I'm just going to remove these because I can always add them back later. What I want to do, though, is I want to create a method for that OK button. So this is going to be a public void OK. And in this OK method, what I want to do is I want to just trigger both of these panels to have their out to be true. So panel anim uh, dot set bool and in here I'm going to have the ID of the bool and the value I want it to set to. So the bool I want to change is capital O-U-T and the value I want to set it to is true. And I'm going to do the same thing for the game info anim. So game info anim dot set bool out to true. Um, okay, and I'm going to make a quick check here, just because I've been so sloppy in the past. I'm going to say if panel anim is not equal to null and game info anim is not equal to null, just so that we can avoid those null reference exception errors that I've caused in the past from some sloppiness, because we want to make sure that we're not triggering this um, unless we we have those objects actually there. Otherwise, we'll create a null reference exception. All right, so now, if I save this script, I need to go back into Unity. I need to find my animation controller. I'm going to add my fade panel controller to this. Uh, OK, it needs to know what the panel animator is. And to do that, I can just pull the fade panel in. And it also needs to know what the game info animator is. And for that, I can pull the other panel in. Um, now, I want to wire up that OK button. So in my panel here, I'm going to find my OK button. I'm going to go down to my onClick. I'm going to add a new onClick event. And this event is going to require an object it's getting a, uh, something from. And that object is going to be my animation controller. And my function is going to be in fade panel controller. And the function is OK. So now, if I hit play, I'll see my um, white screen drops in, and if I click OK, drops out, fades out, and now I can start playing the game. And there we go. So that's kind of the basics of creating a, a fade panel controller. What I want to do next is I want to be able to do the opposite. I want to be able to have uh, when an end game condition is reached, I want this to fade back to white, and I want this screen to drop down again, or maybe a different panel, um, saying, you know, you win, three stars, whatever, or you lose, sad face, whatever. Um, and so to do that, it's kind of just the opposite of creating these um, fade in and fade out animations. And I haven't done this yet, but I'd like to leave this kind of as an exercise for you guys to try out. Um, I will create another video going over it, but if you're watching this video today before I create that other video, it would be a good idea for you to try to do that on your own. Um, okay, so that's kind of the basics of creating a level transition or a scene transition. So again, as soon as we hit play, I just want to see this again because I think it looks kind of nice. Um, 
and you can't really tell it's jumping in. I could actually, let's make that a little longer transition. Let's go to our animation and we want game info slide in. I'm going to make this just a little longer. So I'm going to highlight these three keystrokes or not keystrokes, key, whatever. They're, there's a name for it. I can't remember right now. I'm just going to push it back to point or yeah. Let's go even further, almost a full second. So I'll hit play and let's see if we can see that slide in a little better. There we go. That's better. And if I click OK, it slides out. All right, cool. Yeah. So um, down below, I'll have a link to the Git of this project. Uh, I will also have a link to my Twitter account where you can find out exactly when I post new videos. Um, I'll also have a link to the Discord server uh, where I'm chatting pretty much every day. I had jury duty the other day, so I wasn't chatting much then. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the description. Uh, other than that, have yourselves a wonderful day.